Welcome to Hovercraft Physics and Chemistry. In this video, we will discuss a useful way to help organize your thinking on energy problems. That would be the energy pie chart, which you can see in this animation. So let's get started. First, let's talk about some of the types of energy that you will encounter in a typical physics problem. In many problems, it'll be just the top two listed here, kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. Kinetic energy is due to the motion of big things, okay, so a skateboard or moving, a ball flying through the air. Gravitational potential energy is due to when an object becomes separated from the Earth. So as it is lifted away from the Earth, it gains potential energy. Elastic or spring potential energy would be involved in any problem that involves something that can stretch or be compressed and rebounds like a spring. Internal energy is kind of a catch-all for all sorts of energy related to the particles that make something up. So we have thermal energy which is due to the motion of those particles, the random motion of particles when they are above absolute zero. Chemical potential energy would be energy stored in the chemical bonds between the particles that make up a substance. And you could also lump in other sorts of energy like nuclear energy into internal energy. In a lot of physics problems, we don't have to worry about internal energy because we generally look at macroscopic, so big objects, where their internal energy doesn't change much. There is one case where we do want to understand what's going on with internal energy, and that's what I call dissipated energy. So dissipated energy is kind of a catch-all for thermal energy increases due to frictional effects or vibrations, things that cause the particles in a system to move faster. So it is definitely a catch-all. It really is a subset of thermal energy or internal energy. In a lot of cases, we'll use dissipated energy to mean an increase in internal energy, again, typically due to frictional effects or vibrations. Let's return to the Energy Skate Park. This is an app from PHET, a great organization with all sorts of simulations in physics, chemistry, and other areas. Highly recommend checking it out. So what I want you to notice in this particular simulation is if the skater is on the ground, not moving, the energy shown in the pie chart is zero. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a tiny little dot there that represents the energy of the skater. When I lift the skater above the ground, we notice that the circle gets bigger. That means the energy of the system is getting bigger, in particular the energy of the skater. The higher I lift the skater, the bigger that circle gets. The closer to the ground the skater is, the smaller that gets. So we kind of think about this as um, to lift this object, we would have to exert a force on it. That means we do work on it. We exert a force over a distance, so we're doing work on the object and transferring energy to that object. As long as I haven't dropped the skater, it's all gravitational potential energy. The moment I release the skater, because gravitational potential energy is determined by how far away the object is from the ground. As the skater gets closer to the ground, the skater speeds up and we see an increase in kinetic energy. And if I drop the skater from the right height, we'll see an interchange between kinetic and gravitational potential energy. At the low point, at height zero, you can see that the pie chart is entirely green. That means that all of that gravitational potential energy has been converted to kinetic energy. Anywhere in between, it's somewhere split between gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. At this point, you might have noticed I have the friction set to none, so this is a little bit unrealistic. I want to show you what it looks like when we do turn some friction on. What we start to see is a red chunk of the pie chart. This simulation calls it thermal energy. It's really a thermal energy increase that's happening, so I would classify this as dissipated energy. It's a small distinction, but there was thermal energy present before. We usually just kind of think of it as being in the background. So the thermal energy that's being shown here as the increasingly large red pie piece is really an increase in thermal energy due to frictional effects. 
So you might know that when there is friction present, it actually causes a temperature increase. As you rub your hands together, you can feel that your hands get warmer. And eventually the entire pie chart goes red. So all of that kinetic and gravitational potential energy has now been converted to an increase in thermal energy, or we could call that dissipated energy. I wanna show another instance where we can get some dissipated energy or a thermal energy increase. Friction is still on. I'm gonna drop the skater from the top of the ramp and watch what happens. Here it is in slow motion. So you may have noticed there at the end, I'll do it again. Right when the skater hits, we see a huge increase in thermal energy. That would be due to some vibrational energy that would be produced in the impact that happens. So that's another case where you can get kind of a big jump in dissipated energy. If an object has a collision, that collision would cause its particles to vibrate more quickly and that would be an increase in thermal energy. So again, we can lump that in as dissipated energy. Let's jump back over and look at the energy forms we talked about before. And I will post a link to this document in the video description if you'd like to take a closer look at it. Again, these are the forms of energy that we typically want to track in a typical physics problem. Let's look at a couple of examples. So in number one, we have a ball being dropped it gains speed as it approaches the ground, and we want to draw energy pie charts. So basically what we want to do here is the work of the simulation, and if there are any of these where you had a question, you could go to the PHET simulation and actually run it and see how closely it matches your prediction. So if I'm starting from some height, again, work must have been done on the ball to get it away from the Earth. It has an initial energy total that was kind of created because some object, some other thing, did work on the ball. So if we consider this position one when it's dropped from rest, and this is energy pie chart one, the entire pie chart would be blue. It would be all gravitational potential energy. I like to use the symbol E subscript G for that. And if I were coloring it in, I would color the entire pie blue. Now for position two, the object is closer to the ground. So I know it has lost some gravitational potential energy because gravitational potential energy, one of the factors that influences how large it is, is the height of the object from the ground. So I can't have an entirely blue pie chart here. I have to have some split between gravitational and kinetic energy. Now at this point, we're not doing any quantitative calculations, but I would know for sure that I would have kind of two pieces to the pie. I would have some remaining gravitational potential energy over here, and I would have some kinetic energy at position two. So again, we're looking at this as kind of energy pie chart number two. And as time moves on, as this falls closer, I know that this would run kind of like a movie that the kinetic energy piece would be getting bigger and bigger as it falls. Let's look at position three. This is meant to be just before the object hits the ground. So at that point, if there's any gravitational potential energy there at all, it is just a tiny, tiny sliver. Um, maybe we could go ahead and represent that as a tiny sliver. So we get a little sliver of gravitational potential energy and almost all of the energy has now been converted over to kinetic energy, EK. If I let that run like a movie right as it hits that point where it's just above the ground, the kinetic energy would be basically the entire pie chart. All of the gravitational energy would be converted to kinetic energy. That thought process is going to be useful when we start to do quantitative energy problem because this gravitational potential energy starting quantity, if I can calculate it and get a number to describe it, I know that that energy total would be the same as all that kinetic energy that would be present right before the object hits the ground. So number two is meant to be a bit of a continuation of number one. So we're gonna start dropped from rest. The entire pie chart would be gravitational potential energy. And then this is actually position three, so we'll come back to it. So 
it's going to speed up, speed up, speed up as it moves towards the ground. It's moving pretty fast right before it bounces. So position two, this was position one, this is position two. This is going to be that case where we have um, just a sliver of gravitational potential energy left. Most of the pie chart is kinetic energy. And then we have to think about what happens if it makes impact with the ground and bounces. You would know this from experience. It never bounces back to the same height unless you throw it downward with some speed. But if you drop it from rest, whatever the ball is, it's going to bounce back not quite as high. So we have to account for that in terms of gravitational potential energy, kinetic energy, and here we're going to have to include some dissipated energy as well. Let me first think about gravitational potential energy. It looks like it's bounced back to a height that's a little bit higher than halfway. So I'm going to make my piece of the pie for gravitational energy be a little bit more than half. So again, these are rough drawings. You don't have to do things perfectly. So I've got a pretty big chunk of gravitational potential energy. If this would be the point where the ball has come to rest on the way up, it's at the place where one moment in time later it's going to be moving downward. It doesn't have any kinetic energy at that point. So we know for sure that the gravitational potential energy is less because it's not at the same height. Our best option for thinking about where the rest of that energy went is dissipated energy. Dissipated energy is thermal energy increases due to frictional effects or collisions or vibrations. We've got energy in the particles increasing because they're moving a little bit faster. So hopefully that gets you thinking about energy pie charts. Again, I don't expect these to be quantitative at this point. They're just ways to start thinking about how these energy forms kind of interact and transform from one into the other. And they will be a useful tool in laying out quantitative energy problems that we'll do soon. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I would appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching.